Good evening, everyone, and welcome to New Year New Start Connections. This is our virtual platform to raise local live job opportunities. We've got a really good um, session today. We've got some really good employers who are keen to engage with you all. We also have Connections colleagues online who are here to help with any of your questions. We're going to kick off this off with this evening with our first employer, and we've got Wilmot Dixon. Over to you. So, hi guys, I'm just going to share my screen. So, today I'll just be taking an overview of construction as a whole, Wilmot Dixon, and then my journey into construction. So, I hope that's okay with you. Um, so, construction is such a large industry, so I'm just going to throw some facts and figures at you. So, it turns over 110 billion per annum, which is 7% gross domestic product. So, it's quite a big um, sector. 6% of construction output is new buildings. So your new leisure centres, your new housing estates, well, 40% of it is um, refurbishment and maintenance. Um, the construction industry um, accounts for 3 million jobs, which is 10% of the UK employment market, which is, again, really good figure. And commercial and social pro uh, property make up 40% of construction, residential 40% and infrastructure 15%. So they're just some facts and figures about construction. So let me talk about Wilmot Dixon. So on the map, you can see um, triangles and circles with numbers. In. This just shows our offices across the UK. And where it says uh, five and four and two, if you zoom into those spots on our um, website, you'll be able to see our local construction offices, which just gives people more flexibility around where they work in. So a bit about Wilmot Dixon. So in, 19, in 1852, John Wilmot undertook his first contract uh, for a sum of one pound. In 1899, the family started its tradition of trading the sons within the Wilmot. So William George Wilmot started his apprenticeship in the company. And in, 18, in 1925, the company completed its first housing development. And coming forward to the current time, so in 2019, the turnover of Wilmot Dix as a whole was 1.246 billion pounds. And we have, a hun we have 90... 3.1 million cash that in the bank at any one time. So Wilmot Dixon and construction is a huge industry to be a part of. So Wilmot Dixon, what kind of projects do we do? So we work with uni universities and colleges, hotels, prisons, shopping centres, hospitals, hospices. We've just built up a, we're just starting the Wimbledon tennis court. So uh, developing a set of tennis courts for the members that go to Wimbledon. So that's a really big project for us. And um, Wilmot Dixon is split into two like kind of companies in a way. So we've got interiors, they do all the rip outs and refurbs of like nice buildings so that don't need the actual building touched itself, just the interior updated. And then we've got construction and housing. So our next slide. So this is just giving you a flavour of some of the buildings that we do. So the big one at the beginning at the top left shows our WWF uh, building. It's a completely sustainable building. It's got rainwater harvester system and it's got solar panels and it's got you know extra thermal properties to keep the building warm during the winter months. So it's completely sustainable. And to the left, to the right of that, we have a school that we recently did for Chris Nicholson in a massive housing de a development. And then below that, we've got um, the outline plan concept idea for a police custody suite up in the north. Below that, we've got some internal market units, which have recently been built. Um, Kingston Townhouse University, that's recently just handed over, and that provides a learning facility for uni students around Kingston, and then Village Hotel at the end. And these are um, a quite a large chain for us. We've built one in Bristol, one in Portsmouth, Basingstoke and Eastleigh, and there's definitely more on the way. So very big, very diverse variety of buildings, what we do. So before I get into the roles of a main contractor, which is what Moomot Dixon are, I just want to touch on like the fundamental roles of construction. Um, and these roles are needed regardless. Without these roles, like we, there would be no construction industry. So again, so you've got your plumbers, your electricians, your asbestos removal, your painters and decorators. And even before those people get on site, you've got your civil engineers and your structural engineers that ensure that the buildings are structurally sound, they don't wobble, they won't bend in the wind, and all that, you know, all the calculations are done. And then we've got your building surveyors that make sure 
all the levels, everything's built to the correct standards, the correct heights, everything's just on point and to the drawings. And all these trades here are like really handy to have if you know someone as well. I mean, my electrician friend saved my life a few times. <laughs> so getting into the roles of a main contractor. So a main contractor is someone, is a company that a customer will go to and tell them, here's my idea, can you help me build it? And that's what we do. So we take their idea from like maybe a concept design, so Reba stage two, and work it through planning, work it through all their cost plans, make sure their budget's on track, make sure everything's accounted for, develop the design to make sure it's ready at stage five to go on to site. And that is basically the, one of the roles of our design managers. And um, they're, they're there to coordinate all the design, make sure everyone's working off the same hinge sheet so that nothing's missed out. But we also have like our sustainability team that make sure that we are building buildings in the most ethical and sound way and environmentally friendly way as possible. Um, but even before that, we have you know our supply chain manager who's there to manage our supply chain, who we work with, who do the work with us. So like your plasterers, your tape and jointers, your plumbers, they're there to manage that relationship. And then you've got your office managers, you know, they keep like the day to day runnings of Wilmot Dixon. You know, we couldn't do it without them. So they're really important as well. And then we've got your new business team. So even before a job comes to us, we have like this massive pipeline of jobs that are in planning or in concept designs with the councils that they're just waiting to get a bit more money so they can put it onto the table. And they could be in the pipeline for two, three years, if not longer. And it's the new business team's job to make sure make sure and keep track of this project and build those relationships with these people. And then you've got your bid submission writers. Um, those are the people that, you know, competitively write um, our proposals for the bid for the for the project. And um, so we'll be going up head to head against, you know, other main contractors, other large contractors, um, and we just make make. We need to make sure that we're in the right light as social value wise, project, cost and program time and quality all affect if we win the job or not. So it's very important that they're, they're up to standard. And then we've got our care, aftercare and customer service team. So once the building's handed over and our cabins have been taken away and the customer is using their building, there's always a few teething problems. And it's just the aftercare department that make sure that that journey, once we've left, is still positive, they're there to fix anything and sort everything out again on time, cost and budget for the customer. So there's a huge range of roles that happen in construction. It's really not just bricklayers and plumbers and electricians. There's so many roles that have to be a part of construction to make it happen. So this is just to give you an overview of you know some of the roles what you kind of qualifications you'll need and the potential earnings so we just take operations so that be your like your building managers and your construction managers and um, the minimum requirement you'll need is a HNC or degree in construction or other related activities and your progression through the change will just depend on you as a person and obviously you're required a CCS card a CSCS card um, but your potential earnings are from 27 to 85,000. So it's really good money in construction. And then if you look at your sustainability team, again, you, you, your qualifications are a HNC or a level four. And um, you know, you could have a degree in engineering or construction or environmental studies, everything like that would help you become a sustainability manager. And the same for your environmental. Um, your human resources so that all depends on like your academic and your professional route that you want to go down to normally people do like a CIPD course um, study human resources a part of college and then specialize further into that and that's 20,000 to 80,000 per year and then you know you've got your communications managers and workers I mean there is no academic qualification required for this you just need to demonstrate that you have good and um, good written and speaking skills. You can engage with, engage with people, 
and make things happen. It's really important communication within construction that people know what's going on inside the business and externally to all our, all our neighbours, all our followers on social media. So that's a really key role as well. So that's 20 to 55,000 pound a year. So it's very good. And IT, this is becoming more relevant during as we're all working remotely at the minute. So IT, again, just certain qualifications like a BTEC, H and C, H and D, all those things will help you get your foot in construction. The whole point of this is was to show you that not every job needs a degree. There is other routes that you can take to be part of construction without going through uni. So what makes construction an exciting career? It's a career that suits everyone's skills. It's a variety day to day. Every day is different. There's no two days that are ever the same. You know your opportunities to travel, like with the Wilmot Dixon map, you can travel up to Manchester or into Kent or down into Cornwall. The other jobs will go wherever. Internationally recognised qualifications. So as part of Wilmot Dixon's trainee scheme, you could come into the business with, you know, a, a BTEC in business and they'll push you through the training and help you and give you a hand to make sure that you're able to go through your H&C route, H&D route or your university degree route, whichever one suits you best. And again, you can enter at any level from an apprentice or a, or a or you can graduate and you can come into the building, into the business, sorry. And it's well paid and job satisfaction. I think one of the biggest things for me is to be part of something bigger. Um, I love saying I built that or I was a part of that. I think that's a really proud moment every time I drive past a hotel that I've been on or a school that I've worked on and just know I was a part of that. I know the ins and out of that building. Like It's such, such a, a proud moment of mine. You get to meet new people every day. That is a guaranteed. Every time, even if you work in the office, you'll get you'll talk to new people every day. Uh, in, in, if you work on site, you'll talk to new people every day. Everyone's coming into this industry and goes out of it. And there's just such a variety of people you can meet. You get paid for your travel as well with Wilmot Dixon. So you could start from home in your mornings at six o'clock, travel to site, which is an hour away, and you'll get paid for that commute time. Um, on our traineeship scheme, you get to move around the business, which is really great. So you'll either have a, a five year or a three year scheme, depending on the qualification that you apply with. Um, and you'll get to move around the business and you'll get to see what each department do, how they interact with the business. And it's from there that you'll be able to pick your discipline, you know, for when you graduate from your um, traineeship. We also offer technical placements with our supply chain. Um, and this is a really good way of building up your knowledge. I did my technical placement with a steel frame company. So I managed the package on one of our sites and um, got to do their quality and then went up to their factory to see actually how their steel was made, how it was put together, how it got transported, what quality checks it has to go to before it even gets to our site. And that was just a real eye opener to the depth of construction as well. So the benefits for working with Wilmot Dixon. So you get private uh, health care, you get life insurance, company bonus scheme. We've so once you've been with us a year, you're entitled to a company car. You get a £2,000 tax free uh, loan, which you can put towards anything. Uh, agile working, as you can see, I'm working from home right now. Um, other people are in the office. So agile working is definitely a big thing at the minute and you get your company uh, laptop and phone given to you. And you also get your birthday off, which is a lovely bonus as well. So my route into construction. So I left school, not really an A-star student. Um, I did my business management BTEC level three for two years. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I just thought business would give me a nice variety of, of you know, different areas I could study. Um, I found an apprenticeship for a construction planner. Um, I applied for the apprenticeship via Co-Trade. Um, I got the job and then I was teamed up with Wilmot Dixon. Um, so the apprenticeship company basically rented me out to Wilmot Dixon. And I, then I went back to college and did another two year course in construction level three. 
So my construction, my apprenticeship was coming to an end. Um, but I wanted to continue working in the construction industry. I found it was re it was for me. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I then had to apply for the Wilmot Dixon trainee scheme. And then because I'd already done two years as an apprentice, I had was put onto the three year scheme. Uh, so now I'm going back to college to do my HNC level four in construction management. And then once I graduate, I get to pick my role, um, which I have no idea yet. There's so many roles. So I have no idea what I'm going to pick, but you're guaranteed as long as you meet the, 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 the molds and the targets that they set you, you're guaranteed a job in the area that you want. So you could be an estimator, you could be a surveyor, build manager, sustainability, legacy, you could be anything within the company. So these are just a few photos to, say, to show you that it's not all about work. So we have a trainee challenge each year, which all the local construction offices team up against to, to provide the most social value. So in that photo with the check, um, we did, uh, we helped to redo and redesign a YMCA in Tunbridge Wells, just giving a bit of a facelift, a bit of a lick of paint, um, redesigned the garden. And it was really nice because some of the res residents actually got involved with us as well. Um, you know, we have <laughs> the meeting of us all around the table. That was last year's training challenge where we were coming together to come up with ideas. And it's just a really nice environment to work in. So at the bottom here, I just have some useful links for you to go to. Um, you know, Co-Train is where I got my apprenticeship. I'd really recommend them. Um, Wilmot Dixon Early Careers is another page that you can apply for our um, management trainee scheme and go construct as well. I have a, a video here for you to see. Um, hopefully it plays. <laughs> I just have some useful links for you to go to. Um, you know, Co Train is where I got my. I'm not sure if anyone can hear the sound on YouTube uh, because we seem to have some te technical difficulties today. So Hannah, I'm going to say thank you very much. And what we can do is actually send out the link to this video um, to obviously people who have shown an interest in Wilmot Dixon. Um, it'd be Thank you very much, Hannah, because you showed us a really good variety of um, roles available within construction. So that was really helpful. Do colleagues, does, does anyone have any questions for Hannah before we move on to the next session? Sorry, my sound didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. We're having technical difficulties. Don't worry. <laughs> Do connections colleagues have any questions for Hannah? No. Hannah, can can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, ha sorry, Hannah. I was just wondering. Sorry, I, I've got a bit of echo. I was just wondering. Um, Obviously, you were saying you did your BTEC at college and then you weren't really sure which direction you wanted to go in. How did you end up looking at construction as the route or the area that you wanted? Yeah, really good question. So I, you know, I touched on law, I touched on HR and I was like, Do you know, what? I'm actually really good at organising. Um, so a construction planner was is literally that you um, you know, plan the job from week zero to week 100 and something, whatever it is. And I just thought that was a bit of me. Um, obviously, I went to the role and actually realised I can't do it. I have no, you know, construction knowledge at all. 
and that's when they put me and made me go around the business like their traineeships so that's how I was able to get a better understanding so yeah thank you great I just wanted to can can anybody hear me yeah yeah hi I just wanted to ask Hannah it said there about level two apprenticeships do you um, take on many young people at level two at the intermediate and what are you normally looking for at that stage from people um, so we don't normally take people on that young. I mean, that I think that picture just showed you kind of what area, what mm -hmm. level H&C or H&D is. Um, but for those people that are level two, I would definitely recommend either getting into an apprenticeship company, then they can help you build up to your level three, then join us or put okay. yourself in level three. Um, construction isn't hard. It's a, it, We make it seem very hard. Actually, when you break it all down, it's little bits that make up a bigger picture. So don't be scared at all. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Hannah. That was really Thank good you. advice. Could I ask Thank one you. question very quickly? Go ahead. No, go ahead. It was a little bit it was quite interesting about the community engagement roles. Uh, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, please, Hannah? So a community engagement. So we have our social value team, and that's all about how we as a company add value to the communities that we're working in. So we have a separate team that work on careers events, helping people get their CSCS cards, our Building Lives Academy, help kids to um, or young adults to have some construction um, ex work experience and then you know we'll help them and maybe find them a, a role to go on to. Um, but we also have a community liaison officer and for large scale projects um, in built up areas you know, we want to look out for the community that we're working in as much as possible. And normally when we build in these places, people aren't happy that we're building. And that's 100 percent understandable. So the role of a community liaison officer is to work with the um, neighbours, work with the community, you know, put aside any differences. How can we help them? How can they help us? And really build a team environment where we're working. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. That's really great. Thank you. Does anyone have any more questions before we move on? Brilliant. Thank you very just, much. I don't know whether it actually, sorry, I just, um, I don't know whether it came up in the presentation and I missed it, Hannah, but you've spoken a lot about the construction apprenticeships. Do you do apprenticeships there in other areas as well? Um, so we tried to look into apprenticeships, but we we found that we were just pushing the apprenticeships through the same route as our management trainees. Um, but we would definitely recommend you try and like go through a different apprenticeship company like CoTrain or Go Construct or there's another one as well um, and get your apprenticeship done through that way. But you don't even have to have like an apprenticeship that way. You could do like an electrical app apprenticeship. You could do a plaster and apprenticeship. As long as you have a level three in something, you are able to join the management trainee scheme. OK. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you very much. We had a really good feedback here online. We've had someone say connections helped me many years ago. Glad to see they're still around and giving opportunities and advice. Well, thank you very much because at the end of the day, we connections mm. are here to give you advice and opportunities. And you know, we've got so many colleagues online who are here to support. So please do please please do keep putting questions in the chat and we will answer them um, online with you. Okay, guys. So next up we've got Berkeley Group. And um, we've got Lisa, and I'm going to hand it over to you, Lisa. Thank you very much, Nina. I'm Liza Smith, uh, I'm the Employment Skills Manager for Barclays and Edward, which is one of the operating companies within the Barclay Group. Um, and unfortunately, I'm unable to share my presentation with you, so um, I will send that to Nina, um, and hopefully you'll be able to circulate that, Nina, uh, amongst the group um, after after today. Yeah. Um, I what I do want to take the opportunity of, uh, today is to give you an overview uh, without repeating everything Hannah said, because um, what the opportunities in the way that that our uh, property development company is set up is, is really quite similar to, to as described with Hannah with regards to the different um, departments, um, land and planning, commercial, technical, uh, sustainability, HR. So all, all of those, the, the, those departments 
departments are, are pretty common across um, most construction companies. Um, so um, what I want to do and, and take the time within my slot is to be able to um, give you a little bit of an insight to Barclays and Airwood. We employ around about 450 people. Um, basically, we are a property management company. So uh, when I say that, in terms of um, the, the staff that we that we employ, it is um, th those who, who really manage the process. So as a property development company, we have the land and planning department who um, work with private land companies and councils um, looking at purchasing land. Um, and they would take that uh, in consultation with other departments such as technical, commercial, and obviously a senior management team um, in making, making, working out how viable that, that plot of land is to, to construct on. Um, and from then, then uh, we put planning permission in um, and then we'd employ um, from our, our current staff uh, a build team and they'd basically be the management build team. Um, the actual then everything that's on, sub, on site it is procured through our supply chain and managed by us to make sure we're upholding the Barclay um, standard of, of build. Um, so that, that's basically how, how a company work and obviously behind that sits all the support functions that Hannah was talking about in terms of HR, finance um, and, and all of the, 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 the normal support functions that you, you'd see within any company. So um, just specialising within the, the, a construction company. So where where do we where do we have our developments? Well, in for Barclays and Edward, we um, very much um, build uh, purchase land and, and build properties within London um, and the South East. So mainly within the M3 M4 corridor uh, and inner London, and outer London. Um, so at the moment we have um, some really interesting projects that we're currently working on. We're working on a project at. Um, at the Oval in Lambeth, um, where we're building um, a Tesco's and then above that some residential, quite a few residential units. Um, and opposite that, it, we, it's an old gas works we built and we've the architectural feature of, of the landscape will, will stay the same. Um, and we will keep the, the gas works chamber and build within it. So it's going to look I think it's going to look epic, but I, you know, I really I hope that, that the the local people, residents, will agree that you know we're keeping the landscape the same, keeping the local architecture the same, and um, and from there we we're, we're we're building uniquely in that. Um, the Barclays St Edward brand is very much about making sure our open spaces are as beautiful as our developments themselves. Um, so within all our developments, we tend to have lots of open space. We have lots of, of um, landscaped architecture um, and lots of, generally lots of um, water as well so that be whether that be natural ponds fountains obviously depending on on kind of space we've got whether it's in or out of london um so that's that's very much how how um the oval gas works will be there'll be some coffee shops and some lovely um commercial units um and restaurants um and then around that there'll be some lovely seating areas um like a village square feel about it with some fountains and, and some really nice outdoor landscaped um, areas. Um, we also have um, projects uh, in Westminster. We have two projects in Westminster that, that are absolutely beautiful and um, the, the residents who, who purchase those apartments will enjoy um, features within within that um, within that um, property, uh, such as a private gym, private cinema, concierge, um, and, and it, it is a truly beautiful, beautiful um, development, both of those in, in Westminster. We then have um, developments in Reading uh, and in Fleet in Hampshire, and we're soon to be looking at um, Hounslow and Guildford. So, I would like to tell you about some the project we're, we're um, going to be um, building shortly in, in Hounslow, hopefully, um, which will be um, the home base in Brentford and the Tesco in Osterley. Um, so as an example of, of these developments, 
it's going to be a seven hectare site that we're developing. Um, it's going to be um, high quality new homes, over 2000 new homes. Um, they're going to be, it's going to be a new modern Tesco extra store. Um, there's going to be a lot of mixed use, commercial, leisure, cafes, gastro pubs and space for a new GP. Um, there's going to be over seven acres of green space. So, you know, I was saying to you earlier on about the fact that you, our unique um, footprint of what we do and, and our build and, and um, architecture is very much about the open space as well. And, and that's a, a good example. We're going to have water gardens. Um, and looking at 60% on-site residential carbon reduction. So sustainability is a, a massive part of what we do uh, and where we're moving as a, as a responsible business. Um, we're going to be creating and safeguarding 650 jobs and um, we're going to have dedicated community plans. So it's going to be um, really bring a lot to the area and um, we're really looking forward to, to that particular project. Um, I was hoping to share some some architectural vision photos for, with you of, of that particular project so you can see what, what the Barclay um, prop developments look like. Um, but I'll send that through to Nina and, and hopefully I'll have a chance to look at it later on. Um, the job, the jobs that we, we that, that we're within construction, exactly the same as, as very much what the presentation you just heard. Um, the only thing I would say uh, to add to that is that it very much that you know, kind of technology is going to be a massive part of construction going forward. Um, a lot of our work is going to be moving to offsite manufacturing, um, so um, being able to design that. On com, you know, on computer and bit three D visualization and um, design will be very much a feature of of what we do and how we do it, rather than the actual um, construction process itself. So this leads me now on to my presentation about what 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 can you do to join Barclay St Barclay Group and and maybe Barclay St Edward particularly. Um, so uh, hopefully the people on this call who are, who are interested in careers um, will be will be asking that question. Um, and, and I'm really pleased to be able to, to share with you that we're going to be launching the Barclays and Edward Apprenticeship Scheme um, in February uh, as part of National Apprenticeship Week. There will be vacancies available in brickwork, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, painting and decorating and dry lining and, and loads of other opportunities within within our apprenticeship programme. Um, we are uh, graduate program is currently live so uh, you can apply for vacant for, for those vacancies on the Barclay website um, and, and that is currently open. Another division within the Barclay Group runs the Building Futures Programme, which is a management programme uh, wrapped within a qualification and apprenticeship programme. That, that's a really, really interesting programme for those of you who are interested in working your way through site management. Um, I'm really interested in looking at it as a model for Barclays St Edward for next year and hopefully we'll, we'll um, be joining um, our colleagues from a different operating company who currently run it so that we'll be able to, to join them in, in the successes of, of that particular programme. And lastly, um, when you look on the Barclay Group website, you'll be able to see we also run academies um, and we run academies in sales and marketing and customer service. Uh, and those are also live at the moment as well for, for applicants. So please do take a look at our website. There are a lot of opportunities net right, as right now and, and more to come in February, March um, as our apprenticeship programme and the vacancies um, come live. So um, that's it from me in terms of, of what I'd urge you to do is look on the Barclay website, um, look at the what vacancies we have. Nina is most welcome to share my email address with everybody who's on this call um, mm -hmm. and if you're interested in in um, emailing me um, about about opportunities that I've discussed really happy to, to either signpost you to to more information for that or, or be able to give you direct information about careers at, at Barclays St Edward so um, and with regards to Hounslow um, we're hoping that it um, you know we'll have um, real jobs available at, in a, in, later on this year um, within within the the borough of Hounslow so that's it for me, Nina. Um, are there any questions? Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions to ask? I can see we're putting some um, some information in the chat there. 
lots of opportunities with Berkeley Group. And we will be sending out your information. So thank you very much for today. And it's really good, like we said, to learn about the different opportunities that are in construction. It's not all about bricklaying and, uh, and practical roles. There's a lot of office roles as well. So thank you very much. Do connections yep. colleagues have any questions? Can I, ju can I just ask a question about the, the Brentford? Um, yeah. Well, the two Brentford opportunities, I suppose. Um, I, I, I work for the, um, the Community Sports Trust. Have you contacted or has anyone contacted the, the Brentford FC Community Sports Trust about uh, possible linking up collaboration, particularly around the green space that you've got there? Uh, if we haven't, we've missed a trick. So I'd be really interested to have your contact details to make sure that we do link up. So yeah, uh, yeah if you could put your contact details in, in the uh, um, chat, then I'll make sure I make contact with you, um, if not tomorrow, early next week. Brilliant. Lovely, thanks. Can I just ask um, where the apprenticeships are going to be advertised? Where will they be? On the Barclay uh, website. Right, OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any more questions before we move on to the next session? No? OK, great. Again, we will be feeding back information to everyone who's shown interest in Berkeley Group. We will be sending out contact details and we will send out the presentation as well. OK, we're going to... thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. We're going to move thank over you. to our next slot. Thank you. We're going to move over to our next slot, which is Brentford Football Club. And I'm going to hand over to Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm just going to try and uh, share my screen if I can. Uh, where are we? There we are, right. Brilliant. So, um, I better put my camera on, eh? Okay. Can you pick me up there? Yeah, I do you like your background there, Chris? Do you know what? I can't even see it on my one for some reason. Bear with me. OK. Just try and do this again. A few technical bits. Apologies. There we go. All right. That's fine. OK. Um, well, uh, good, uh, good evening all. Um, my name's Chris. Uh, I thought I'd actually start with a couple of um, uh, a little bits about me, just because um, it's always good to know who, who's, who's talking down the end of the camera, I suppose. Um, so I work at the Community Sports Trust, and I'm the uh, the education manager. Um, been here for quite a long time, actually, 20 years. So um, you know, it's 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 been a a, a very interesting journey. Um, I started at uh, university uh, way back in the late 90s, uh, part of my work placement. Uh, I chose Brentford. Brentford uh, Football Club were the only ones that, that offered me a, a placement. Uh, and then the following year, I went back and started in a, a position. Um, as I said, 20 years, I've been through about 17 Brentford FC managers. Um, uh, all very different, uh, but, but you know, all um, contributed to, to where we are now. Uh, and I've worked on you know, hundreds of projects with thousands of young people. Um, I'm a Wimbledon fan, so if any, anyone is a football fan, uh, you'll know Wimbledon's had a, a very interesting story um, and moving from you know moving over to Milton Keynes so I'm the uh, the the homegrown Wimbledon fan I used to go to Wimbledon uh, when they were based at Plough Lane which is where they are back again uh, so I'm very happy about that um, bit of music I love a bit of Bruce Springsteen uh, I'm an in indie fan so uh, for those that don't know who who Rolling Stones are uh, google it they're very good uh, not as good as Bruce Springsteen but uh, yeah a little bit about me um, so who are, the, who are the Community Sports Trust? Um, essentially, we're one of the leading football charities uh, in the country, actually. Um, very exciting at the moment. We're affiliated, obviously, to Brentford Football Club, which is why we've got, um, I've got that community stadium up there. Uh, we're really closely, uh, closely worked with them, do lots of stuff with them, um, strong links. Exciting time for us at the moment, exciting time for the football club. Because um, we were able to um, talk about um, 
you know, at the moment they're fighting to get into the Premier League. Um, again, there's loads of opportunity that are coming up about the uh, about um, the different roles, different jobs we can do uh, and we can offer in the community. Um, lots of partnership work. So we we thrive on partnership. Um, we try and get out. That's why, you know, we want to try and work with as many different partners, whether it's schools, local authorities, uh, as many different ones as we can to try and provide opportunities for young people and have a real impact in the local community. Um, as much as our, we're really excited about the football club receiving their new stadium, uh, for us, it's all about our new offices. So uh, you'll see a nice graphic there, I hope, of, uh, of our new facilities, which are at the bottom of a couple of towers, um, but we've got two floors of space. Uh, we'll have two large classrooms and we can break that down into smaller education spaces. Um, at the moment, we're in plans. We're, we're discussing plans as to how to utilise that to benefit the local community. So um, it's really exciting. If anyone's watching and has any ideas for that space, do get in contact with us. Um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's a good time to be involved with us. The other thing we're, we're doing is, um, actually, I'll come back to that bit, but the um, what we what we are, are about, what we're supposed to be and do do is we use power of sport to educate, motivate and inspire young people from all backgrounds. So um, we offer uh, lots of different programs, um, whether it's sports participation, whether it's getting your health, uh, you know, health programs, getting yourself fit, um, offering some mentoring opportunities, uh, changing attitudes to to learning or education um, or, or just generally having having fun uh, within the local community. Those are some of the the areas that we focus on are going to be more detail. The vision for us, uh, essentially, you see the brand new stadium in the middle there. Um, just beyond that, you've got Gunnersby Park. Now, Gunnersby Park is a huge opportunity for us. We've just, we're one of the partnership, um, strategic partners, I should say, uh, within the development of that space. So there's now a sports hall in there. We've got um, AstroTurf pitches there, which we're going to start to run and already do run some of our football development camps out of. Uh, so what we're looking at is that you'll be able to go between our offices uh, and our classroom spaces over in the stadium, five or ten minute walk across the across the, uh, the Gunnersbury Park there to play some sport or to get involved in, in some more active sessions. Um, we're also looking at where, you know, how we can link in local colleges, and local universities to this whole idea of of a bit of a campus um, and again off, offering an opportunity for, for young people to to develop their skills. Um, so we've got over 30 projects um, and our, our community sports trust is broken into lots of key departments. So um, we've got our football and sports participation, which is probably what we're uh, originally known by, I suppose. Uh, we go into schools, we'll, end, we'll um, run breakfast clubs, we'll run um, support for teachers whilst they're doing their, their PPA, so their preparation and assessment work. We'll, we'll go and take um, their classes and do all sorts of provision with them uh, in there. We'll do after school clubs, we'll do holiday provision, um, lots of different areas. Um, we'll focus on boys football development centres uh, and also girls football development. It's a real big, fast growing area at the moment. We'll have over 500 young people taking part in those sessions every week. And even though we're online at the moment, uh, we're still seeing 300, 400 um, regularly participating in our online sessions. So. Um, we, we're maintaining that that uh, engagement throughout lockdown. Um, that's our sports participation area, our football area. Um, lot, all ages, I must say, I must add, it's from uh, fives all the way up to to under 18s. Um, my main area is the education employability at the moment. So within our within my remit, uh, right remit, sorry, we'll work with local authorities in commissioned work. Uh, you know, working with young people who who are uh, let's say don't, they don't like going down the traditional route of school. Our, our idea is that we'll try and re-engage them back into those uh, schools, into that, make them, you know, help them recognise uh, their skills, their value, um, their qualities, and then putting that to good use, and put, you know, allowing them to to uh, build up their confidence, communication skills, those type of things, so that they can they can re-engage back into school. Um, lots of primary work, secondary work based around. Um, uh, primary and secondary behaviour. So again, those that are struggling at school, we can we can mentor some of the young people uh, and re-engage them. Um, schools programme, 
big schools program I, I've touched upon. Um, we also have a now now we're part of or sorry we we manage the youth service for Hounslow. So um, again, that's a, a real big area for us. Uh, being able to offer some some detached youth work uh, across the, the different areas um, and different areas of the borough. Um, and that again is holiday provision. That's after school stuff. It's the evening stuff. Um, that ties in with our communities engagement program, which is is street sports and working on the estates, offering um, some valuable advice in different areas. Um, and, you know, plenty of mentoring going on there, just opening doors, making young people realise that there's opportunities for them to to develop and, and progress through our organisation, but also beyond um, specialist work. So we are um, targeted now. We get commission work through local authorities um, to work with some very difficult uh, young people, young people with difficult backgrounds, I should say, uh, because when you get to know them, they are they're great to work with. Um, Young Carers is another one, so we'll we'll, we'll provide uh, for Ealing and Hounslow the Young Carers program to so allow them the space to talk to other people who are, you know, all, also have caring responsibilities, and we allow them the space just to relax a little bit, uh, unwind, uh, and time away from their the, those responsibilities. Um, youth program I mentioned, holiday provision I mentioned. Um, so there are, you know, essentially there's lots of different areas. We're not just because we're affiliated to the football club, a lot of people think, well, okay, it's just football. Absolutely not. We've got a kayaking boating arch down by Q Bridge. So we'll utilize that as much as we can during the, the summer months, uh, the spring and the summer months. Uh, that is intertwined in, in some of our other work. Uh, and we've also just taken on the national season service. So we've got a big contract um, with those guys uh, via our, our governing or our governing body. Now, in terms of our how we're governed, um, we we um, govern directly through the English Football League Trust and also the Premier League. So there's a capability process to make sure that we're quality assured. Uh, all our staff are up to up to speed with training and safeguarding and, uh, and first aid and, and those types of things, DBS checks, etc. Um, and, you know, when we're working with partners like schools, we'll make sure that they're fully aware and they understand our processes. Um, in terms of our, what, our organisation, how we set up, We've got just shy of 100 staff, so um, I must say we're always looking for more because that the, the way that we work with those staff or, or manage those staff is some are casual, uh, some are volunteers. Uh, we've probably got about 35 full-time staff, 40 full-time staff, and as I said, we're all, we're, we're always looking for more. Uh, certainly, coaches to be able to to work on the estates programs or in our schools, um, subject to their qualifications. Um, lots of hours, lots of numbers. Uh, we obviously get through. Uh, I think a key stat there is our 31.4 uh, average contact time, because what we want is we want our young people to be able to progress through through project to project. Uh, so we, so a lot of our staff are actually, um, you know, they started off on work experience or started off on one of our programs on, on the estates or in, in, in one of our primary school sessions. Uh, and then we can watch their development over time to when they hopefully become part of our coaching staff. Um, just as in terms of where we are and where we work, uh, we're in five different areas. So we've got Ealing, uh, we work in London Borough of Hounslow, Ealing, Richmond, Spelthorne and Hillingdon. Uh, and we've got a, uh, the hub there, if you can see the, the dome at Uxbridge High School. Um, that's something that, again, we're looking to develop and we run a lot of our football development stuff out of there at the moment. And that's going to be uh, transferred uh, and and. You know, both in, in the, the Uxbridge Dome and over to Gunnersbury Park uh, when we're fully set up. Um, I mean, what I wanted to, to mainly focus on today was was what we are offering for, for young people. So um, what we want to be able to do is support you, know, you guys watching uh, basically transition onto your next phase. So that could be, um, you know, from, from secondary into uh, college, it could be from college into uh, university, it could be um, from school into employment, um, particularly around the traineeship programme. So we've got a new traineeship programme which we're uh, we're starting up, which we're looking for young people to sign on to. Um, so anyone interested, get in touch. I'll, I'll take you through the programme in a second. Skills workshops, especially now we're looking at, uh, you know, how we fill our young people's time during lockdown. So we're able to, uh, we're looking at running short courses. There's a big online offer that we're uh, engage with at the moment where young people can get involved with uh, 
achieving little qualifications, short qualifications, which are great on the CVs uh, when they're actually applying for jobs. Volunteering is something we're also uh, quite hot on, so we like other people coming in. That's part of the traineeship, but also uh, there are other areas you can volunteer to get some experience, which again is, is, is great when you're looking at what area you want to focus on, because within the Community Sports Trust, uh, much like the, the most areas, it isn't just the football coaching, there's marketing areas, there's uh, teaching areas, uh, there's hospitality areas, there's areas in IT, lots of different areas of finance you can get involved with. Um, another big area is, is our level three BTEC. So we work with West Thames College um, with the with the BTEC uh, and that they are um, essentially our, you know, our top footballers. That That's the ones that, that, that we have a link directly with the football club and the football club will send scouts down and there's a liaison there to see whether or not uh, the players are, are good enough to be able to perhaps put onto some sort of performance um, program. Um, and then obviously coaching opportunities, those that are, in, that, that are keen to get involved with coaching sport, um, doesn't have to be just football, um, it can be other areas like gymnastics or multi-sport, the trust offers you a real chance to go and try out uh, those different sports. So you can do your little coaching um, courses uh, short court courses, sorry, and then you can come and practice, put them into practice with some of our, um, in, our in some of our schools under the watchful eye of our mentors and our senior coaches. Um, for our new traineeship, though, we're looking at, you know, basically what is it? So we're looking at a 12 week program. This is for this is for uh, young people 16 to 18 at the moment, but uh, we're looking at developing that uh, up to 24. Um, the traineeship program is 12 weeks. Uh, 30 hours every week, 120 hours quality work placement. That's that's the key element there. You can get in, get in, get some real experience working alongside some professionals in different areas across the trust and the football club, and also beyond. So we're not just looking at um, the uh, the football arena or the sports arena. We're looking at hospitality elsewhere. We're looking at local partners to to work with us to offer some placements that actually at the end of that placement, at the end of the traineeship. Those other areas it could be a hotel chain or or uh, somewhere like that would have a member of staff that they've helped train up that they they could then offer an apprenticeship or uh, full time work or part time work. Um, yes, can I just come in there actually because we've had a question from somebody which I, I would love for you to answer as you yeah. are online. It says just for clar clarification for young ones here is a level three B tech different from a a B tech sport offered during the year ten and year eleven. Yeah, so level level three B tech is is your uh, yeah. It's, sorry, well, yes, it, it's a, it's the it's sorry. Is it same as year ten and eleven? Yes. The question is here is is a level three B tech different from a B tech sport that's offered in year ten and eleven? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Your, your level three is your 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 essentially it's your A level standard. Yeah. So that's what that's what our B tech is. Now, if we what what we're looking at. Just to answer that question, it, it is that we're looking at whether we can offer it. I mean, if you go to West Thames College, because we work closely with West Thames College, they offer a level, a level two, I think it is. We're looking at other other lower um, qualifications and courses that we can offer with those guys. So whether we, we do the, uh, our coaches run the um, and tutor the level three B tech at the moment, we're looking at whether we can go to a level two and a level one. So that's something that we're hoping to get off the ground again in the next 12 months. Um, again, with the traineeship, the key, the key really is to make sure that at the end of the 12 weeks that we've upskilled and developed the skill sets of our young people we're working with. So there'll be support for functional maths and skills, uh, maths and English skills. Um, if, if the uh, candidates haven't reached that level four yet, um, and also it's about the, the confidence and raising that, that communication standard so that they are ready to go into some sort of uh, either work or another course. Um, along the way, the 12 weeks, um, you know, it's a full time, it's a full program. Uh, the, the candidates and the, the trainees will pick up first aid, health and safety qualification, sports leaders award. I mean, the sports leaders is specifically tailored around our coaches because, again, at the end of the, the 12 weeks, we'd love to be able to offer some sort of contract to, to the young people. Uh, and obviously, the AQAs, we, we can do the, the short courses that I've, I mentioned before. Um, opportunities to learn from industries, including hospitality, youth work. Again, it's not just the uh, the sport, as I've mentioned, it's other areas as well. 
uh, and also the pathway. So there's key areas there that, uh, and key conversations that, that our staff can have with the young people, with the trainees about, well, what do you want to do? What, where do you want to, where do you want to be in a couple of years time? Um, if you want to be a university, we've got good links to the University of West London. Uh, so we can work with those guys and they will come in and deliver sessions through us uh, throughout the 12 weeks. A uh, key factor for some young people is obviously the player, if they're a big football fan, um, then we do work with the club. We'll get players involved. We'll get them, uh, you know, we'll go down to the training grounds. We'll visit the new stadiums. Uh, we have that flexibility to be able to do that once lockdown is is done and dusted. Um, well, you seem to have some football fans online here, Chris, because we've got a couple of people say go Brentford, and we've had some good responses to your um, your offer here. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to finish up now because we've got our next slot coming on. But thank you so much, Chris. I mean. We have had some really good questions come in. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? Can I just flick? Can I just do that bit? That's that's probably the uh, the important bit. Yeah, I guess. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course. Go just ahead. on just on who it's for. Yeah. Uh, 16 to 18 at the moment. As I said, the 19 to 24 program. Uh, this will become active later on. Qualify below level four. They've increased that. It was level three, uh, but now we can, if you're below the level four, we can take A level students on for this. Uh, have to be eligible to work in England and, and have to be, you know, not not in employment training or training, not in employment or education or training at this point. Key for me is, um, are you interested in doing it? Who we're looking for is in th people who are enthusiastic, who want to be part of our team um, and, are, and are committed to it. I think that's that's the main thing for us. Um, what you want to do, to be honest, if you're interested, just give me a call. Um, give Get in contact with us. I'll flick through this stuff. There's my details. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few more people involved. But we're looking at starting up in March in terms of the traineeship. So uh, we want to start getting people signed up as soon as possible. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Chris. And we are going to share contact details with everybody who did sign up and buy tickets for this slot. So thank you very much, Chris. Um, I'm going to hand over now to our colleagues from Work Hounslow, from Hounslow Work Hounslow, who are going to talk about their offer. And we've also got connections colleagues online as well who are going to be talking about our website. I'm going to hand over to you, um, Tim from Work Hounslow. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank, thanks for joining this evening. Um, my, my name is Tim Metis. Um, I work uh, for the Schools and Employment team at Work Hounslow. Now, um, this, this evening, I'm going to run through um, our website. We've recently um, started, opened a new website uh, for, to promote training and employment opportunities in the borough. So I'd like to run through the website and uh, just, just to give you an idea how to navigate and uh, how to register on there and also to discuss about some of the opportunities that are live at present and, and the best way that, that you can apply for those roles. So firstly, I'm going to um, just look to, uh, look to go uh, to open up the link to the, uh, the website. Uh, bear with me for a second. So uh, can, can everybody see that there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, as you can see, this is uh, this is the uh, the the uh, main page. This is the uh, job and training hub. Now uh, this is this this. Yeah, is... I can't see your website. Ah, right. Bear, bear with me for a second. I thought I'd share the screen. Okay. Bear with me for one second. Right, one second. Should be, hopefully you should see it now. Oh. Can you see it now? Yeah, we can see that now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. So this is the uh, this this is our this this is our website. Second, apologies about that. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as you as you can see, this this is the main page. Um, now this is where we promote um, we we promote our, uh, our our opportunities first of all, and what's new in the borough and what training and employment opportunities that 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 we have. Um, so, um, yeah, just nav nav navigate down briefly so you can, so you can see some of the opportunities. So, uh, yeah, we're working, uh, uh, we're promoting uh, apprenticeships for TFL at the moment. We've got a, a recruitment fair on the 26th of January. Uh, so, yeah, yeah it would be a good opportunity for anyone who's interested in working for the London Underground. 
and uh, yeah, if they're interested in apprenticeship, we're also working uh, with um, Learn Hounsar, which is uh, Hounsar about education, and we're promoting a lot of their courses. So this this particular course we're promoting is uh, to do with employability. So this is a good opportunity to uh, to, to improve your skills and learn. Uh, about business administration and uh, especially in regards to communication. Um, as you can see, uh, we're also um, we're also promoting um, other opportunities. We've got a, a level uh, four site supervisor apprentice position that we're we're promoting for one of our uh, one one of our um, apprenticeship training providers. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're also looking for um, for um, hog carriers and and cladders, uh, for. Uh, for um, one one of our uh, tier groups, one of one of our sites. Um, so yeah, this is a really good opportunity to to go on there, and, and you, you can have a look through our website now. Our team is uh, is is run by uh, firstly our employment skills manager, um, and uh, we we have a business support officer. We also run a, a program called Skills Escalator, which helps people to upskill. If uh, if they're currently in work and they want to improve their skills, and we have a, a couple of very um, very good employment advisors um, who, when people initially register on the website, which I'll show you the process shortly, they will then get a, a, an initial um, interview, and then they will be registered on the website. And with that, you'll you'll get a dedicated advisor to help you with your CV, to help you with employment opportunities, uh, and to um, yeah, and to promote. The latest opportunities that 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 we have. Um, so um, so yeah, this 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 is a great opportunity to to then um, to then go onto the to the website. Now the, this this is the uh, the contact and registration process. So it's very it's, it's very simple. So you can go onto the website and as you would do with a with normally with a recruitment website, you can uh, you can leave the details and the type of inquiry if you're interested in one of the training. Or, um, or one of the em em employment opportunities. Now, um, I'll just briefly go back to the to the job section, so you can you can have a look briefly through some of the opportunities we've got. Now, I'm working directly because I work on the construction side of it. I'm the construction officer, so I'm working directly with some employees within the borough. Um, some of the employees who are on on this session this evening are, are also uh, some of the employees I work with. And uh, and one of them are work uh, looking for hot carriers um, to start in the uh, high street portal, which is um, the develop the barracks development, which is in the centre of Hounslow. Right? So they're looking for they're looking for people with CSCS cards who who are interested to work as hot carriers or labourers. So this could be a good starting point if anybody's interested in getting into the construction industry. So I'd be able to assist directly with that if uh, if individuals are interested in that in in, in applying as long as they are. Uh, have their CSCS or are in the process of getting their CSCS, uh, something we can discuss. Um, also working with another development, uh, this is a, a part of uh, Brentford um, community stadiums, funny enough. The, uh, the site next to that is, uh, is the Kew Bridge stop. Now, uh, the developer who's involved in that, they're, they're running a construction training initiative. Uh, as part of the agreement to help our local residents into employment and uh, and training, and uh, and they provide work experience opportunities as well as helping them to get their gain their CSCS card. Uh, also, they w they will help them with, um, with with other construction uh, um, construction operative uh, type of training that they'd be interested in. And they get a um, work experience opportunity with the subcontractor after they do their initial training. And uh, assuming that they're reliable, they turn up on time um, for, for the duration, then the subcontractor will, will then offer them an opportunity. So this is a really, really good way of, of, of getting into the in, into the construction industry if this is something that somebody's uh, that, 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 that you'd be interested in. Uh, so this would be something we can we can also assist with. Um, I was informed um, earlier by one of my colleagues who is responsible for the apprenticeship. Um, side of, uh, of the skills and employment team. That there will be a webinar on the on the 10th of February, uh, apprenticeship webinar uh, between 10:30 and 11:30. So if anybody is interested in that, they, they can leave their, their details at the end of this session to, today, and then we can uh, we can invite them, send them an eventbrite link to invite them to the uh, to the webinar. There we will be promoting various. Uh, apprenticeship opportunities and advising also the best way to to apply to sort of 
yeah, in how how their CVs need to be structured, the best way to uh, yeah, the, the best way to focus uh, you know their CV and to ensure that they have the relevant um, GCSEs um, relevant for the actual uh, opportunities themselves. Um, so yeah, as you can see here as well, we 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 work with uh, with, with with various partners also. Um, as you can see here, we've we were working with, we've been working now with the NHS most recently. We've been helping with the vaccination centre uh, positions, uh, which we've been very successful um, helping them with that. So uh, yeah, we also work with Shore Trust on on the Jets program, and as I mentioned, we uh, we're working uh, directly with uh, LearnHounds though um, for anyone who wishes to up to upskill. Um, so um, so yeah, that's 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 an outline of. Uh, of our uh, website. Uh, any questions from anyone? Thanks a lot, Tim. I'm just trying to see if anyone's got any questions online. We've got someone who asked, do we offer work experience at Hansa Council? Yes, we do offer work experience at Hansa Council, but obviously due to the current pandemic, we haven't actually been able to open the council buildings, which is, a, which is really difficult. But of course, you know, when obviously we are back in the office, Yes, we do. I mean, we are, we do openly promote uh, work experience because obviously we understand the opportunities that it leads to and we understand obviously that level of work experience. So, yes, hopefully one day we will still be off, we will be offering work experience in Hansa Council. Thank you very much, Tim. Does anyone have any questions for Tim? Okay, I'm going to move over to our connections colleagues who also have an update on our. And can I pass it over to Connection, please? Hi, yeah, if we could get the Connections page uploaded. Um, so Hounslow Connections is um, the host of today's event. So we have obviously um, been able to share loads of um, great providers with you and their opportunities, not just education and training wise, but also employment. So please do make sure that you access the resources that you have on hand through um, the presenters that we've shared with you today because they are fantastic services and can definitely support you with progressing. Um, Hounslow Connections is the career service that's um, focused on young people aged 16 to 19, up to 25 if you have an education healthcare plan. And we support you with exploring your options and building a plan um, for um, building a plan for your future. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, building a plan for your future and also preparing for it and making sure that you're comfortable. Um, we've got a great website as well, which we'll be sharing in the chat. Um, and that website has loads of different resources for you, not only to build your CV and to explore careers, but also to get in touch to get careers advice. So it might be that you have no idea what you want to do next. It might be that you had a plan and now you're rethinking it. It might also be that you are needing help to get that plan into play. Connections can help you in a range of different ways and we are happy to even just give you that one-off support. If you don't want ongoing help, that's fine. We can give you that initial start and help you to plan and prepare independently. But if you do feel like you do need ongoing support, we can definitely do that. We've got great careers advisors that can give you step-by-step -step support and keep a track of your progress and make sure that you are on track with where you'd want to be. Thank you. I've lost you there, Aman. Have you finished your presentation? That's okay. Sorry. Nina, that's okay. Hi, Catherine. Would you Hi. like to talk through the website? Yeah. So this is this is the website that um, Connections has, which is a good resource for um, any of the young people out there that Aman was talking about. So 
if you're a young person and you just like going online and you want to look at different resources that might help you think about your career choices or you're interested in doing a quiz or you would like to find a phone number to make an appointment with one of the careers advisors in our team all of that information is on this website um, if you would like to um, Speak to a careers advisor who can help you look at your options, if you're confused about your options, and if you've heard about things tonight, so from the different providers like Barclay or um, Brentford, or if you were online yesterday and there were providers that you heard from yesterday and you'd like to ask about them and would like to know more about how you can apply for those opportunities, feel free to get in touch with us, okay? Thank you very much, Kathleen, for that. I can see that our colleagues are having some technical difficulties there. We've just frozen, but thank you for that update. Before we go on to our final um, session, I just wanted to introduce Paramel um, from Skills Training, who came online today because he had some really interesting jobs that he wanted to talk about. And I thought this is a really good platform for you to talk about these, Paramel. Are you with us, Paramel? Yep, um, I've got some vacancies over here. Um, they're, they're apprenticeships, um, and they're in IT, childcare, um, and I think one of them has already been shared, the TFL vacancies, but TFL also got an event coming up um, in Apprenticeships Week in February, okay. um, and that runs from the 8th of Feb to the 12th of Feb, and during that time, they're going to be giving young people the opportunities <laughs> to, you know, go to their virtual apprenticeships fair and have a look at the different apprenticeships that they will have available. So, um, yeah, we as skills training, we can help young people to prepare for that, um, you know, getting them actually ready so that they can present themselves to TFL in a professional way um, and increase their chances of getting onto one of their apprenticeships. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing that information with us because at the end of it, it's all about the support that we're offering uh, for people to be able to uh, access these opportunities. And Paramount, we will be sending out your details as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just if any, anybody's interested in any of the vacancies that Paramount has just spoken about, we will be sending out his information. Yeah. Um, so you will be able to make contact with him. Thank yeah. you very much, Paramount. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we're going to move over on to our final session. And today we've had, we've got colleagues from uh, Hansi Youth Council who are going to be talking about opportunities mapping. So I'm really glad to have them on our session today. So I'm going to hand over to our Youth Council, Hansi Youth Council colleagues to talk about your opportunities. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Fatima Zara and I'm the Member of Youth Parliament for Hounslow. Being a member of Youth Parliament allows me to work with young people all across Hounslow and ensure our voices are heard. We are so grateful to be given the opportunity to present at the webinar today. And in this session, we will highlight some tips and tricks that we use to find opportunities. I am with six other members of our Youth Council to help work out your next steps. Just to let you know, any tools or opportunities will be made into a document on the 14 to 19 websites. Our socials are at Hounslow Youth Council and that's and that will be our contact details. So make sure that you get involved and join us. This webinar is also a great place for you to get to know us and also get involved and let us hear your opinions. So please interact as much as you can. This is also one of our manifesto points to create many opportunities for young people, especially in COVID. We understand how difficult it is to find some opportunities and stay motivated. So I hope you enjoy. In this session, we'll talk about how to work out what you want to do and tips and tricks. I'm going to pass it to Kaina. Hi guys, my name's Kaina and I'm here to talk to you about using Google to your advantage. Google is an amazing platform and once used correctly, uh, is an amazing platform if you use it correctly. Using key terms such as access scheme opens up a world of opportunities. Almost every business or firm out there has one of these and for most of them you don't even need to provide your educational background. They're only interested in you and what motivates you and makes you the person you are. My main tip for all of you here today is to scour these websites. Don't rely on the first page of Google. Click on the company website and search under tabs labeled things such as our opportunities or our programs. It sounds simple, I know, 
but you'd be surprised how many companies have amazing opportunities hidden on their website. And guys, when in doubt, email them. These people adore go-getters and bravery and courageous young people. Worst case scenario is that they don't don't reply, but best case scenario, they help kickstart your career. And that's all from one strategic Google search. Thank you, Kainat, for giving us that talk. So my section is all going to be about finding hidden opportunities, schemes, and foundations. Following from Kainat, a key way to find these hidden opportunities is by using keywords. Sadly, searching for just work experience will not help you, and I know this from experience. So you need to make sure that you tailor it to find out exactly what you want. So for me, it would be year 12 law work experience in the half term. This helps to ensure that you have a clear and tailored response. Now onto the foundations I use. So I personally use the Sutton Trust, and this helps me with you know university talks and career advice and the Social Mobility Foundation. And it helps me with trying to ease that transition. Apprenticeship opportunities are also easily accessible by using the Hauser Council website. It will direct you to a page where you can filter what apprenticeship you want. Another great example is City Gateway, which helps you prepare um, people from, who are 16 to 25 years old in the world of work. All of this can be done by the correct Google search. Thank you, Fatima. So, hey guys, I'm Nagesh. I'm in year 13. Um, so, I'm here to talk about uh, university financial support. So, basic things you pay for tuition fee, and also if you're moving out to go into some accommodation, you pay for a maintenance fee. So, the maximum amount of tuition fee you can get each year is £9,250. That's the maximum. Um, and then if you move out, your maintenance fee will be or depend on where you're going for university. So some support you can get for this is student uh, government uh, student loans from the government. So uh, the way you apply for this is you just basically search up student finance account, go onto the website, make an account, and you can apply from there. Uh, your application depends on stuff like which university you go to, which course you're doing, if you've done a degree before, your age, your nationality. Uh, they also provide a student finance calculator, which helps you to estimate the amount of loan that you can take from the government. Uh, this money goes straight into your bank account and you gradually pay it off once you get a job. Other financial supports include bursaries, uh, which pay you back for any travel that you do for your course. For example, if you're a medical student and you go back and forth from a hospital that you're working at, or if you're a t a, a teacher tra um, training to become a teacher and you're traveling back and forth, uh, additionally, if you're from a low-income household, you can apply for bursaries. Um, also, most universities don't publicly advertise their bursaries that they give out, so really deep, di deep dig into uh, dig deep into their uh, websites and try to look for their bursaries. Uh, there's also trusts which you can apply to, which are similar to scholarships. Um, if you impress them, then they'll help you fund your education. There are also grants, which are mainly for students who have children or are caring for dependent adults. There are also allowances for students with disabilities, universal credit if you have low income, and more recently, there's loans if you're traveling, if you're studying abroad because of COVID. Uh, so next, I'll hand over to my colleague Aziza, who will talk about some helpful tools. Thank you, Nargis. Thank evening. you. Before, I hand, before we go over to Aziza, I just wanted to interact with the people that are watching. Thank you, Nog. That was brilliant. And thank you, Fatima. We've got some questions here before we move on to you. Um, so someone's asking, are you finding it hard to find work experience in COVID? Go ahead. I'm sure you've got an answer for that one, guys. Yeah. yeah so, in yeah, I would say yes, because I've been trying to apply for jobs and most of them are saying we don't have the finances um to uh hire someone or that there's just loads of complications everyone's just trying to figure out how to run their business yeah. take taking on new people new interns is hard at the moment however there are online opportunities and you can um haggle your teachers to see if they uh, know anyone that they can work with so for example um i'm currently asking all of my teachers if they know any programmers that i can shadow um online because I'm into programming. So things like that, just talk to people, talk to adults, talk to anyone you know, and ask them, do they have any connections? And just work off of your networking skills to get that down. No, That's I totally it. agree with you. I totally agree with you. I think, you know, what you guys are saying is really valuable. Guys, please go ahead, because you I love your motivation. Carry on, please, go ahead. Thank you, Nina. Good evening, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to speak about UCAS. 
UCAS is a website designed for young people to help choose their career path wisely. They have a range of options to explore from courses, universities, colleges to apprenticeships and other advice. They also have a bus career quiz, which allows you to think more about the jobs you could do and which, which suit you. In addition to that, they also have advice for under and postgraduates um, and other suggestions and ideas for alternatives and post-16 options. A really good website to develop your skills and knowledge is the Open University, which has a range of courses you can take to boost your CV. All these courses are free and online, and the best part is that you will receive a certificate to prove the skills you have gained. Future Learn is also a good website to look for courses and other help blogs such as career development, CV and digital skills, the job market and much more. Marky? Um, thank you, Ziza. Hi, I'm Marky. I'm the London Youth Assembly member for Hounslow. Um, and I'll tell you about Barclay Skills and the idea I hold. Barclay Skills allows you to find your skills and work experience even. It has amazing tools such as the Wheel of Strength and other options such as to choose what you would like to do. It, would, it also allows you to choose if you would like to develop skills, confidence, and many other things. It's free for everyone, schools, colleges, and sixth form students. You can select who you are and then what you want to do and how you want Barclays skills to help you out with. For example, to gain confidence or to develop skills and many other things. Also, Idea Award is another thing which is really helpful. Idea Award is short for Inspi Inspiring Digital Enterprise Award, which allows you to play fun courses and complete them to get a badge or an award that is industry recognized, which can go on your CV and it can go on your CV and then you get an award. Thank you. And now I will pass you on to Rachel. Thank you, Malky. Hello, I am Rachel, and today I will be speaking to you about seeking online advice. In our lives, every moment is ex every person is experiencing a different moment. I am currently a year 11 student studying her GCSEs, and I'm at the stage in my life where I must decide where to go next. Beginning to make these decisions had become a very overwhelming process, and with the current world climate, this was not easier, as I now have to rely on the internet to find any more information. After reading lots of brochures from schools, speaking to teachers and my parents and countlessly researching, I didn't realize how difficult these decisions would be and was left almost more confused than when I had begun. I had found that a far more useful way was seeking advice from previous students who had been through the same process already. Here are some of the websites that I found more useful for this. The first being the uni guide. I think this website is excellent as it has a section dedicated to advice as well as information that walks you through a range of routes you may use. Um, student quotations of their own experiences regarding the different options. This website is completely free and very accessible. Another I found that was the student room. This one I found so useful as you're able to speak directly to students and see other questions and responses as well. In addition, it is also free and easily accessible. Lastly, I would like to add, it's okay to be confused and don't be afraid to ask the questions you want answered. Thank you, I'll pass you on. Hi guys, so I'm back to talk to you about a charity organization called The Brokerage. The Brokerage is a social mobility charity that is committed to breaking the corporate mold. They believe in equal access to opportunity, irrespective of your background or race, and they only care about talented young people who are ready to get the jobs they deserve in a world where their ability and aspirations alone determine their career path. They introduce young people to a wide range of jobs and role models to raise awareness of the corporate world. They create and promote access to opportunities in financial and professional services for all young people. They provide paid placements, apprenticeships, and permanent opportunities so if university isn't the way for you, then maybe the brokerage is. So for anyone who's looking to build a skill set unlike any other and network with high profile companies, the brokerage is the place for you. I'll pass you over to Sarah.
Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm in Hunter Youth Council. Thank you for listening to all our tips and speeches for you all. We hope you enjoy them and we hope you found them useful and that they'll help you out in the future. Um, in today's, um, in, in a moment, a link will pop up in the chat and it'll be a link and it'll be a questionnaire for you to fill out because every young person's voice counts. And I hope that every single, um, and I hope that everything works out there. Um, I'll, I'll pass it over to um, Kleinart or Fatima. Once again, thank you so much for listening and interacting with us. We look forward to looking through the quiz and making sure we take action from this feedback. All resources will be on the 14 to 19 Connections website. Our social media for Twitter and Instagram is at Townsend Youth Council. So follow us and see what we are up to. Or even better, join. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you so much, Youth Council, guys. That was so interesting and so motivating. I felt like you gave so much information that so many people would love to hear and there needs to be a platform for us to share that information. So please do obviously make sure that you send over any presentations to us that we'll be able to put on the Connections website. Does anybody have any connection, any uh, questions for um, Hansel Youth Council colleagues? No, we don't have any questions. Okay. They seem to answer everything, so thank you very much. I, I know, I was about to say, we've, they've covered so much uh, during their the slot, and they've spoken about so many different pathways and avenues that it'd be really good for you to send this information through to us so we can actually send it out to people. And it's great to have you online, and you're absolutely right. You know, it's great for people to hear your stories and hear how people have gone into apprenticeships, gone into traineeships, what kind of information or what kind of information is out there and how you can access it i'm sure connections colleagues are really appreciative of um, all the information that you've brought today and uh, again you know would you like to finish on anything i just wanted to say i really enjoyed the presentation from from you guys and i was just reflecting on you know how you had divided divided it up in the different sections so you know it is all about how we use websites, but then it was also about how we can find short courses, look at small certificates or qualifications that might be just around IT. Um, and there's lots of you know smaller courses that we can do that help boost our CVs in different ways. You don't have to do a long course, but you know there's a variety of options and courses and ideas out there. So thanks very much, guys. It was really helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. And as you said, yes. You know, you are really good at networking. I know one of your colleagues is particularly good at networking, but it's a great skill to have. And at the end of the day, you've got to reach out to people and you've got to talk about the opportunities out there. So continue with your networking skills because I think you guys are doing really, really good. Okay, I think we've come to the end of our session now. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's presented today and thank you to everybody who's joined. There will be a, a lot of information um, that will be coming out to you. We will send it to you via your uh, Eventbrite registration. We will send you the slides and any information. We've also got connection colleagues who are here to help. So if you want to contact us at connections at hounslow.gov.uk, please do. Please reach out. They're here to help you. If you need CV advice, if you need someone just to have a look at your CV, um, then please reach out to them. They're also on 0208 583 5151. And, and they're doing an online virtual one to one meetings at the moment as well. So please do reach out to them. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to cover before we finish? No? no I, think I just want to say thank you so much for having us. Um, and thank you again for everyone who listened and um, asked any questions. I'm sure there will be some follow-up questions from some, some people who have uh, logged on today. But thank you so much, guys. So we're going to finish up now. So thank you very much.